Every serious incident on the road requires forensic examination. And inside the cordons, dedicated officers take on this challenge. Right, it's a smash, isn't it? There is little bits of debris all over the road. What the hell has done that? This is the collision investigation team from Gwent Police. Has he come in, has he come in and gone back out? A black Citroen that we're going to be looking for. Guys, unless you're witness, let's move away then. Give him some space. He's trying to avoid it. Have you seen it come in? Tracking down the evidence. I think that's a unique fit. To get to the truth. You know, that really is significant intrusion, isn't it? Speed is definitely a factor in this case, unfortunately. Potentially, the slower he's going, the more trouble he's in. All in a day's work for the crash detectives. CPR on. They're requesting the motorway is shut so they can get the required ambulances and trucks on scene. Stop. Stop. Which vehicle was yours? It was the Transit. The Transit. Tango Echo 140. He was the driver of the Transit, if that makes sense. Right, based on the fact that you were driving the Transit, OK? Uh, you're going to be arrested. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm a defence. If you do not mention one question, send them which you may later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand? calls that were coming in, it was quite obvious from the start it was going to be a major incident. You automatically go into to work mode. We were under no illusions at all as to the scale of the incident we were, that we were going to be facing. car and a van have collided on the westbound carriageway of the M4 motorway. The family travelling in the car are on their way to hospital, including the two children who are seriously hurt. All injured parties are from the same vehicle from the Fiesta. How old are the children? Um, so it's young, right. so toddlers, maybe a little bit older. First accounts are the van has come across the carriageway and, and struck the rear of the stationary car and come to rest where they are. Dean needs to establish just why their car was struck by the white transit van. Right, have a quick look around the vehicles. Mm. 
looking at the vehicles involved, you could see that there was a huge impact. It had crushed almost a third of the length of the vehicle. They're still unclear about where the Fiesta was at the time of the crash. But information from witnesses is filtering through. The car was in the hard shoulder with the hard stationary. And a witness says that the white van has veered across two lanes straight into the park. It's veered across it. A number of witnesses have been spoken to has confirmed that it was on hard shoulder stationary with the hazard lights going. But it's Dean's job to find out exactly what's happened here. As other emergency response teams finish their work, the scene is now clear, and the hunt for forensic evidence can begin. Let's have a little look. We work backwards. Um, I think where that glass is is probably where the car was. We just got to do a more detailed walkthrough now and identify the precise point where the car, as best we can, where the car was parked. But making sense of so much evidence isn't straightforward. It's possibly the Fiesta. The thick black one is the van, I think. Looking at it. All options must be considered, and this takes time. Has he come, has he come in and gone back out? He's obviously spun at some point, hasn't he? Yeah. That's possibly him going backwards. They suspect the van has rotated to this point after impacting with the rear of the car. It's a distinct shape, isn't it? Yeah. Which Over I would say is that, yeah. So to get that, that van has to be coming that way, doesn't it? When the van driver was arrested, he wasn't carrying a mobile phone. There is a Sarge. There is a phone in you. You can see there is a mobile phone on the floor, still connected via a cable. Okay. I'll tell you what, we'll photograph it in that first. I'll photograph it. And then we'll um, take it from there. The phone is still plugged in. So we photograph it in situ and then. Um, they can seize the phone in case the battery runs flat or calls keep coming in and damage any potential evidence. Cover in coke. Mm. I've uh, you finished with the phone now, Sarge. Now, analysis of the driver's phone becomes a priority. This is the oil, isn't it? And closer examination of the marks, scrapes and gouges is revealing how the collision unfolded. There's a couple of marks in there, but... And where the Fiesta was parked at the time of the crash. So the area of impact is here, rather than a precise point. It shunted the Fiesta along the hard shoulder. At that point, the wheels are locked and damaged, which has caused the marks, the telltale marks. Looks like the first point of impact with the barrier. And then you can see by the way the mark runs, the direction of travel. It's gone along the crash barrier before it just comes back out to its post-impact position. And the van in the meantime has, has come in and come and spun around as well to obviously face back in the opposite direction. And that's left a trail of oil and gouges as well. Almost four hours have now passed since the crash. A 
four-year-old girl and a three-year-old boy remain critically ill in hospital. At the moment, we don't know why the vehicle was stationary on a hard shoulder. But at that point, with the, with the children still in the trial seats with the harnesses on, that's one of the considerations, that's what we've got to look at. Yeah, they, you know, two small children, two seats, they're on the face of it, it's suitable. Harness obviously will go over the child's shoulders, like that, and then clipped into the, into the buckle. But you can see halfway up the shoulder strap, um, they've been cut. Nice clean cut across there. That would suggest that certainly the child was cut out of that seat. We were hearing updates from the hospital. It didn't sound good. The two children were both critical. The information we had was potentially they wasn't going to survive. Um, and that the, um, the children's mother was seriously injured as well. I think it was the early hours of the following morning we found that the, the little girl had, had died from the injuries that she'd received in the collision. And um, the little boy was, was holding on, but it wasn't looking too good for him either. It's been just over 24 hours since the crash. The 41-year-old man who was driving the transit van has spent the night in custody. He's just been told that the four-year-old girl has now died. I think I was just driving, driving home. I just... What lane was you in? Um... I think I crossed over to like the left lane and I must have headed over too far. What, what speed was it traveling at? Um, the van's restricted to 70 miles an hour. It's restricted to 70? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what, what speed were you doing? Um, I, I don't know what speed I was going, I'm sorry. The driver's recalling very little detail about the crash. So Dean and colleague PC Richie Wyatt want to know if more could be revealed by the vehicles themselves. Ideally, this would have been done at the scene, but the weather conditions and the road conditions didn't allow that at the time. There's a distinctive shape of damage, as you can see on the front of the van, and a similar shape of damage on the rear of the Fiesta. So hopefully now we'll try and match up like a jigsaw piece as best we can. It's not going to be a perfect fit. We'll be trying to line them up now to give us an indication of the, of the shape of the vehicles at the point of impact. Yeah, OK. You're not far off here, Dean, It's not. Actually, it's, we'll get the angle right now and that's not far off. So you've got that shape, almost 90 degrees. And then if you look on the bonnet then, you've got the witness marks. Again, it's 90 degrees. So that if you look at them here, they do, they do match up. Right, that's as far as we're going to get in there. Did you see the car in the hard shoulder? I can't honestly remember seeing the car. Honestly, it just happened so fast. I just heard a van and I went, went against the steering wheel. This reconstruction reveals the moment the van made contact with the rear of the Fiesta. It had stopped on the hard shoulder because the little girl said she felt unwell. 
As you can see, the intrusion is huge, it's significant. You're probably looking in excess of two feet. You can see I was pushed up in it. Oh, good. And you can see the, the, the rear panel of the car where the boot block is. You know, it's gone into there, it's gone approximately that distance, just as a, an indication of the amount of the crush. Unfortunately and tragically, the people that sat in the back of the car, particularly the children, didn't stand a chance for this, really. It's, it's a very graphic representation of what happened in those split seconds, really. This really is quite upsetting. Just a few hours after finishing here, they find out that the three-year-old boy has also died from his injuries. Every collision that we deal with is emotive. Everyone has got a personal story. It just seems to make it worse when there's children involved. And you want to get answers for that family, and this was no exception. On the night of the crash, the team used a laser scanner to capture a highly accurate record of the scene. And it's now created a virtual version of the motorway. Our sort of assumptions, estimations, calculations, call them what you will, of, of the position of the vehicles, just from the marks alone, you build a picture in your mind as potentially where these vehicles were. The 3D laser scan gives us the opportunity to essentially revisit the scene. There's a mark there, and there's a mark there. Those marks were created when the van collided with the rear of the Fiesta as it was forced into the ground and shunted along the hard shoulder. Even though in your mind you believe that's what's happened, you've got to prove it. Again, we used the 3D laser scanner to scan the two vehicles, and that gave us a, a detailed image when they were positioned back together. And this has now been imported into the scan of the scene. So what Reese is looking to do now is line this tyre up with this mark here, created by the rear wheels of the Fiesta. And hopefully, these wheels here of the transit van will line up with the mark we have running through these markers here. And this will just give us a representation, an image, of what we think the position of the vehicles were at the time of the crash. OK, so the, I've got them pretty much as close as I can get them. What we'll immediately see from that, we're looking through the transit van essentially from the top. We can see it's actually straddling you know, on top of the white line of the hard shoulder. That's quite telling. That's uh, a good indication of the position of the van immediately at or just before the impact even. It's going to be straddling this white line of the hard shoulder. With the position of the vehicles confirmed, Dean needs to go back even further. The investigation team started trawling the CCTV footage from motorway cameras to piece together the actions of the driver and, and the lead up to the collision itself. As soon as he was initially identified, they were able to track the van's movements on every camera right through the M4 network. Can you describe to me uh, your journey in as much detail? Did you come over the Prince of Wales Bridge? No, I thought I'd come down from Monmouth Way. We're in Monmouth Way to do? Oh, All right, okay then. Sure you... it was. He's employed as a painter decorator. He was working in the Leicester area, but decided to get in the vehicle and head towards home. He believed he came down the M50 through Monmouth. But we knew differently. The information we have is that you've come down the M5. From the M5. And then over, over the left second second crossing. Yeah, I normally come down the Monmouth way. So our information is you come over the bridge. Right. I can't think, honestly. I really can't think. 
the footage may have exposed the van driver's real journey, but can it reveal anything more? Yeah, here he comes. He was quite close to that barrier, wasn't he? Mm. Over the rumble strips, into the hard shoulder, then back, lean one. Almost. Yeah, well, look at him here now. Straddling the lean dividers of one and two. Now he's poor driving, isn't it? Alarm bell started ringing, and you could quite clearly see for most of the route from the Seven Bridge, the driving was very erratic. But then you look a little bit further on this car here with the, with the roof box, roof box it, yeah. how close he gets to that car. Well, that's outrageous, isn't it? He's almost clipping the back yeah. end of the car. We know people are phoned in about they are. the van driver's manner of driving, and you can see why. Because he would, wouldn't it? Any issues along our road? No, no, I can just think of, to be honest. Any altercations with any other drivers, any other road rage? No road rage, no. Nothing at all? No? From an experienced traffic police officer's perspective, you see people driving like that, you know there's something wrong. Or there's a major distraction in the van. Did you on your phone? I don't think I was, mate. Honestly, I know I used it on a way home, but I can't think to that exact point. Like, okay. I really can't. How many times you used it? Um, twice, I think. We've had your, your phone partially yeah. downloaded. OK. The first part you're looking at is your call records. OK. There's not two phone calls. OK. This here is all the calls made Right. This is only from 11 minutes past 11, this one. Yeah. Well, all these, double-sided. Okay. In going, out going, multiple people. OK. It looks to me you've continuously been on your phone. Oh. And not the twice that you're suggesting. Yeah. Because the only time I see this many calls, in yeah. going and out going, in this short period of time, is when I'm looking at drugs investigations. In the two and a half hours he'd been on the road, the driver made and received a total of 37 calls. So we know he's, he's talking on the phone to this point, but it wasn't connected via Bluetooth. Right. So he wasn't using it hands-free? No, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been hands-free. Look how slow the, the car will start pulling away from him. Yeah. It's almost like this vehicle's coming to a standstill. And he's concentrating on his yeah, phone Yeah, and he's me. taking a straight path on the corner there. Yeah, bad as it is all the way through, is particularly bad mm. when we know he's on the phone. It's at this point where he ends his last call. But he's also streaming YouTube and Spotify. They're not able to say whether he's interacting with the phone. Right. There's a good chance that he is. So it's a miracle there were no oh. accidents prior to this. And he's travelled all the way from Leicester. Yeah. The van's full journey was recorded from the Prince of Wales Bridge to Tregeagle Park intersection. What it didn't show us is the last section, approximately two to 300 metres prior to the impact. We needed to piece together that bit that was missing. And the answers could lie within the van itself. I knew that potentially there was information on what we call the airbag control module. This is the important bit that um, tells the uh, safety systems in the car when to operate. So when the vehicle senses there's going to be a crash, the electronics kick into place and the airbags are fired. And as the airbags are deployed, the unit captures a five-second snapshot of pre-impact data. It's been sent for analysis. I don't make sense of this. And now the results could reveal the final movements of the van and the actions of its driver. The biggest question was how fast was the transit van going? 
what was the data telling us? What it's saying is that five seconds prior to the impact, he's doing 112 kilometers per hour, which is equivalent to 69 or just under 70 miles per hour. And then two and a half seconds prior to the impact, the brakes are applied. He hasn't braked sufficiently hard enough to activate the anti-lock brakes. And you can see from the graph that he is breaking down to the moment of impact. So at what speed did the van hit the car? So at impact, the van was still doing 57 miles per hour. It's a huge impact. 57 miles per hour as it hit the rear of the Fiesta. Something that's stationary and, and, and a small vehicle. At the scene of the crash, witnesses recalled seeing the van veering across the road straight into the car. But the data proves otherwise. For four and a half seconds of that five seconds, the steering angle was very shallow. It showed a slight right-hand turn, but it was constant. And the fact that it didn't change indicated that that van would have been on the hard shoulder or straddling the white line of the hard shoulder for at least 120 metres. With the van driver clearly on the hard shoulder for almost five seconds before the impact, the question still remains. Why was he driving in this way? When we arrived at the scene, the driver was being um, spoken to in the back of a police car. I'm going to breathalyse you, OK? Because I believe you've been involved in a traffic offence, OK? Blow into the machine. That's it. Brilliant. Keep going. Keep going. And immediately showed a positive test. The driver was found to be almost two and a half times the drink drive limit. He said he'd drunk heavily the night before and taken cocaine. There was a half full bottle of wine and there was also an empty vodka bottle in the footwell. He did say he'd had a couple of mouthfuls of the wine because his mouth was dry. So we know that he was even drinking as he was traveling between Leicester and Newport. The driver admitted two counts of causing death by dangerous driving, as well as causing serious injury to the children's mother. He was jailed for the maximum term of 14 years, reduced to nine years and four months because of his early guilty plea. He'd already been convicted previously of drink driving. He'd already been convicted of using his mobile phone whilst driving. It was obviously something that was part of his routine. He knew what he was doing. And it's caught up with him in the most tragic circumstances. <laughs> 